give me one big thought that you have. We're going to talk later about the conference championship games, both of them. Give me a big thought you have going into the weekend. I think these are two very good and very unpredictable games. Okay, so over the last, you know, three months, I have seen both, all four of these teams. And over the last two weeks, I've seen three of the four, all except the 49ers. And one of the things that I like about this weekend, Mike, is that I have no idea who the final two are going to be looking at this final four. And I'll tell you why. Because I think, first of all, Baltimore is favored, rightfully so. They're the one seed. They have a great defense, totally shut down uh, Houston's uh, growing, powerful offense. Zero touchdowns against the Houston Texans. That is a really good accomplishment based on what we've seen there. So everybody says, well, geez, this is Mahomes. He's different. Not going to be easy for Patrick Mahomes. So that's one thing. And Lamar Jackson on the other side. So you think, man, it really looks like Baltimore's game. Well, you know, bet against the Kansas City faithful at your own peril. And then the other game, I wish that I could say uh, that I felt great about either team in this game, but quite honestly, I don't. I probably feel a little bit better about Detroit because of how they've played recently. But now Detroit goes outside. It's going to be a beautiful day, evidently, so that probably won't matter. But Detroit goes outside, and they go on the road away from the womb of Ford Field, which is one of the great home fields I've ever seen in the 40 years that I've covered the NFL. And they go away from Ford Field to play a team that is absolutely stacked, that appears it's going to have Debo Samuel back in pretty good health. So you see that. But there's just a little something about the 49ers that you don't really know right now. They haven't played great recently. They didn't play great last weekend until the last drive of the game. And again, look, I think the Packers are a rising power. All hail Brian Gutekunst and Matt LaFleur for putting another really good team together without even pausing post Aaron Rodgers. But but you just really haven't seen the consistent steamroller that you saw a lot of times last year and earlier this year with the 49ers. So that's why, Mike, I think it's the greatest kind of championship Sunday because we don't know what's going to happen. There isn't a 12-point favorite and a walkover game. There's no walkovers this week. There's two potentially great football games. That's what I like about this weekend. And that's why I'm surprised, frankly, that not that you or I gamble or pay particular attention to it or, frankly, believe anybody should spend any money other than what they would otherwise devote to cigarettes and whiskey on gambling. But the idea that the 49ers are favored by seven is a little surprising to me because it feels more like a coin flip. It's a game that you could easily see go either way. Same as the AFC game where the the spread is half of seven. It's three and a half for Baltimore. So that really does surprise me because it doesn't feel inevitable. We're so used to conference championship games that feel inevitable that when there is an upset, it's a really big deal. It's lightning striking a milk bottle because it just yeah. doesn't happen. There's a team of destiny in each conference that we just know is going to roll over whoever the opponent may be. And yeah, this time around, there's no rolling over to be done. And that's one of the things that I love about this game. I mean, two weeks ago, now 12 days ago after the game, I stood with Dan Campbell for, I don't know, six or eight minutes after the game, talked to him a little bit. And I talked to him about going back in time, about the bite the kneecap speech. And when he looks back at it now, I kind of asked him 
a little in, in very polite ways. You know, anything about that speech you want to take back? Absolutely not. Absolutely nothing. And he made the point to me, Mike, that Detroit really needed a jolt. And he's absolutely right. And I believe that not only did Detroit need that jolt, but Detroit also needed a jolt of great players. And that's why I think the marriage of Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes has been spectacular. Because Brad Holmes has done such a good job in the three years that he has run this team, that he has been the architect of this team, starting with Panay Sewell in the first round, then going to Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, his getting Amon Ross St. Brown with the whatever it was, 114th pick. And, and so all I'm saying is that every team in this derby this weekend has a great story to tell. And I'm telling you, Mike, I can see any one of these four teams, any one, holding the Lombardi in 16 days. And apparently those who do wager their cigarette and whiskey money on football disagree with our assessment because the line has moved in the favor of the favorites. The Ravens now minus four, according to DraftKings, and the 40s at Niners up to minus 7.5. We'll talk more about both games coming up. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.